this is a question specifically for men who like women women who like men tap in okay do you genuinely enjoy find pleasure in paying for women say that it's on a date but a woman that you genuinely like a woman that you genuinely adore and care for do you like paying say that you have the finances do you like it Instead of dating a man who wants to split the bill with you and asks you, what do you bring to the table? Date a high value provider who would absolutely feel so emasculated if he ever asked his date to pay. Instead of tolerating dusties who only bring problems into your life and not solutions, date a man who doesn't even need to be asked. He'll make the appointment to take your car in, get that tire fixed. He'll offer to have food and medicine delivered to you when you're not feeling well. And if your job is stressing you out, he should say, hey, honey, you don't have to work. I only want to see my girl happy and stress-free. And that is my job to provide that lifestyle for her. So I have to cancel the singles event that I planned to be on my farm this weekend. Y'all know I'm an event planner and I have a fish farm and I advertised a fishing for love event where singles could come here and fish and have dinner and meet each other in person, not on a dating app. And five women RSVP'd yes, and one man. And even the one man that did RSVP did it through one of the ladies. Now I did all of my marketing specifically towards men because I knew that the women would RSVP. I promoted the event on 45 different Facebook groups specifically about hunting, fishing, camping, country life, and all local to my area. I know that my post reached over 12,000 people specific to the age group, the gender, and the interest that I just described. And yet, no man RSVP'd. So let's talk about why men are not RSVPing and attending these singles meet and greets. So I read something that said that men are just more spontaneous. They just want to show up. But I don't think that's true because men have no problem buying their season tickets to a football game a year in advance, being on time for their fantasy football event, being at a 7 a.m. golf tea time. So the issue must be that they're just not interested in attending these singles meet and greets. I also read that men don't really like the pressure of meeting a woman in a formal dating experience and they prefer meeting a woman naturally like at a bar or a concert but like don't we all now remember i chose an event that men love doing and i get men here every day at my farm fishing i chose a fishing event because as an event planner i know that i have to always have something for men to be doing men don't enjoy just standing around talking like women do so that's why i chose fishing as the predominant activity and yet they still didn't want to come so I would love to hear from you all as to why you think men don't attend singles events. Because all I hear is them on social media talking about how lonely they are and how they all want to meet a woman and how much they hate the apps. So what do you think? Many months later. So my man asked me how he could support me in my grief about this election. So I told him how I needed support. And I think a lot of other men might need to hear this. Men generally want to fix things. So in our grief, a lot of men want to try and solve the problem or try to talk about things in a logical way. And grief is not logical. And grief is not a problem to solve. Grief and disappointment and sadness is a feeling to feel, a feeling to process. It's not something that we can intellectually work through as much as we have to feel it, accept it, have compassion for it, and let it take its course. So that requires empathy, not problem solving. So when your woman is expressing her pain, her grief, her disappointment, her sadness, her anxiety, her fears, it's not enough for you just to nod along and sit there. What we want is for you to engage. It's a bid for connection. We are looking for emotional safety. We are looking for you to say to us that your feelings are valid. Based on the fact that Trump has said that he'll be a dictator on day one, that he is against abortion and thinks that women who get abortion should be punished, that he is against gay marriage, and that he is against transgender rights. We are scared. We're terrified of Project 2025 happening. So we need you to validate our fears. The next president of the United States has said all of these things and we are afraid. So we need to hear you say, yes, I can understand why you're afraid. 
We also need your reassurance. We need you to reassure us that you will help protect us and be our ally. We want to hear you say that our rights matter to you, that our safety matters to you, and that you will stand with us and that you will fight with us to not only get our freedoms back, but to also prevent more freedoms and rights from being taken away. You can help us with that by researching with us, by fact-checking things with us, by publicly acknowledging the unfairness that has happened, by confronting your friends when they say misogynistic, horrible things, and by being as outraged as we are. Because if your freedoms were being taken away, we would be outraged with you. We don't want just a pat on the back and a hug. We want you to be an active participant in helping to fight for our equality and our body autonomy and to be a hero and stand up to fight for the human rights of everyone, no matter their sexual orientation, their gender orientation, their color of their skin. We want you to be a hero with us. So every time that we are fearful, we need your reassurance. We need your comfort and we need you to remind us that you are by our side advocating for our rights and freedoms too. If you do not give your partner an emotionally safe place to share her feelings, then she will shut down, she will pull away, and she will share less and less of herself with you, which will create a disconnect in your relationship and it will greatly affect your sex life. Now, I told my partner all of those things and he responded very well and did all of those things, which makes me feel relieved and happy that I have him in my life. And if your partner won't do that for you, then you might need to reconsider whether they should be your partner. I think I remember her asking in that clip <laughs> a few months back or maybe some time back, why aren't men coming to my events? I'm putting on a singles event here I have some land out here and and I'm a I'm a business owner and I'm I'm looking to have a space where men and women can get together. Um if this is the space that you're providing, do you think that men really want to be a part of that? Honestly, you're talking about validating feelings, reassuring, comforting, emotional safety, fighting with us. I mean, just because somebody differs on their opinions doesn't mean they're not with you. This is the problem that most modern women have is that if a man isn't doing what they want, then they think that he's against them. And that, that's not the case at all. You ask the man to be a leader. So you're giving your input to the leader and the leader is saying, based on the climate, I think we need to go this way. I think this is the best direction for us. Now, it doesn't mean that he doesn't he, he, he completely disregards your feelings, but your feelings, both yours and his in the grand scheme of things, does not matter in terms of what reality is. Feelings should definitely be taken into consideration. But if I feel sad, <laughs> but I also feel hungry, which one needs to went out? Hunger, because hunger is the most important. So I can feel sad, but I need to go get me something to eat or else I ain't going to have to worry about being sad if I have this feeling of hun hunger for, for a long, long time. You get me? So trying to make these types of videos to I understand I'm grieving, I'm going through this process, but it's not just you. It's the totality of women that have gotten on social media and just bashed men. OK. You want to do this to us, we're going to punish you. And then they want a man to lead. Okay, you're going to do this to us, or we're going to take something away from you, something that you really, really want. Well, for a lot of dudes, you were doing that anyway. And that's what they were complaining about. And now you're just blatantly saying, we're going to continue to do things to hurt you, to cripple you, or at least try to. But then you want us to support you. You want us to help you to grieve, grieve, to say that your feelings are valid, to be reassured, to provide you with a space of emotional safety. All the while turning right in right in front of men's faces, maybe not all men, but a lot of these men right in front of their faces. Validate me. But your feelings are stupid. Reassure me. 
but you need to get together. Comfort me, but I, I, you just going to need to man up, grow a pair. You think that's emotional safety? Honestly? I mean, even if you guys disagreed on who you're voting for, don't you think that you should at least sit down and say, well, this is how I felt and this is why I voted this way. Well, I, I, I disagree with that. I felt this way and so this is why I voted that way. Done. Done. You might feel a certain way and allow each other to go through whatever process it is. But last election, was it the same when your candidate that you wanted or clo more closely aligned with, he won? That's what I'm saying. It, it's not necessarily about who won the election. For me, it, it's more about how a lot of modern women are in this headspace to where men have to, in any situation, cover for them. Any situation. Be there. Fight for, fight for them. Comfort them. Reassure them. Validate them. Give me some ice cream. Give me some, uh, 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 some, some, whatever I want, some wine, whatever is going to make me feel comfortable. But if a man is going through the exact same thing and if he felt the exact same, well, you know, you got to be a big, strong man. You have, have to be a big boy. You have to get out there and work, huh? The world doesn't go the way you want it to, does it? Dry those tears up. Uh-uh, no crying here. What's fair is fair, man. Excuse me. I like this guy, but he just stares and stares and he never speaks to me. I don't want to initiate with him because I want to be feminine. So what should I do? Some people may disagree with me in the comments, but it is what it is. I'm going to say it because the men, actually multiple men have told me this. The only people who are, who actually care about you having your stuff together, you getting all these degrees and you getting this bad girl is you. Just you. Because a real man, which y'all consider to be providers, don't care. They don't care about how many degrees you have. They don't have, they don't care about how much money you have in the bank. They care about you being a feminine woman that treats them good and that knows how to do traditional things inside the house home. That's why so many of y'all be running rabbit confused as to why that man cheated on you with a girl who you feel like was less than. Well, baby, it had nothing to do with her bank account. It had nothing to do with her education. It had everything to do with how she made him feel. Yeah. Is it just me or has the rate at which guys approach girls plummeted? Actually, I feel like when I go to Nigeria this Christmas, I will really believe if it's like me. Maybe like I'm not just a bit. I think I am. You know what I'm saying? Or if the temperature has really changed and men don't approach women any longer what's tea what's going on did i miss something but it's weird like i saw the cutest guy today at a dispensary and his voice was deep like tilted my waist and like you know not even a glance not even like a side eye nothing mm. that hurt my feelings there are a lot of men out there who are not single by choice. I would go as far as to say most men aren't single by choice. A lot of men get so angry at women who are single by choice because they cannot conceptualize. They cannot fathom a world in which women do not need men. And all of this sort of stems from men needing to be needed. And that's kind of how men and women differ too, is that men need to be needed and women need to be wanted. A lot of men think that being needed is what gives them value. And it's turning out to be really, really hard to sort of navigate that mindset when it comes to dealing with men. A lot of men need to be needed and they will do whatever it takes to make sure that you need them for something. This is why a lot of men are so pressed about women being in the home. They they need to create a situation in which a woman needs them for survival. How does a man create a situation in which you need him for survival? He gets you pregnant. He convinces you to quit your job, to stop going to college and getting your degree. He is creating an environment in which you rely on him for your survival. And women are conditioned to acquiesce. Men are conditioned to conquer. Women are conditioned to concur. Once you see it, you cannot unsee it. When I was 18, my partner tried to get me to drop everything 
and moved to Hawaii with him and his cousins. He wanted to incapacitate me. And thankfully, I was smart enough to say no. But yeah, literally just be aware of men. Treat them like they're the boogeyman. I'm not trying to discourage anybody from dating men, but make sure that the right one is actually right. You know what I'm saying? Because there's an awful lot of wrong out here. So you're not trying to discourage uh, women from dating men, but then you literally say that men are the boogeyman? That I, I just feel like that's a dumb statement. I feel like, yes, there are some men out there that will do this to you. They'll get you out on an island and they'll cut off all of your friends and family. Uh, but you, you say that like that's the majority of men. Maybe, just maybe there's another perspective to this to where men don't want their women to work because they want to feel like, hey, I, I'm, I'm providing. I hear that women say, well, I don't want to work. I just want to stay home with the kids and, and just be a stay at home mom. There's a lot of women that say that. And so a man is thinking, OK, well, let me provide that. You have to understand another part of a man and they do the same thing in business is going and getting the job done. You've seen it in wars. That's why we had that's why we had all of the the, the World War One, World War Two. There's a need there. There's something that has to be done or else I'd be chilling. I'd be taking it easy. You think a man wants to be out there on the streets fighting fires and, and fighting crime? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I understand there's a need to protect society. I understand that I might walk out there and somebody pull something on me. Somebody lace a uh, 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 something and, and, and try to hand it to me or me even get close to it. You've seen officers get close to a specific thing while a citizen should have been the one to walk up on it. The officer says, the officer says, no, step back. And while he's trying to safely remove it, he gets caught immediately, falls down, has to get medical aid right then and there or else his life is done. A man goes through that so people like you can sit up here and talk nonsense. So you people like you can sit up here and talk crap about men and you, you still don't get it. A man's out here trying to make the world a better place for you. Am I saying that men are perfect? No. Do men do a lot of things wrong? A lot of things wrong? Absolutely. But who do you think you are for you to be up here tearing down men? And then you have nothing to offer. Like, oh, he, he, he wanted to incapacitate me, so he got me pregnant. Don't you think that maybe the dudes that you're around do that? Because I've never thought about that. I, I can't think of a single person that I've been around in my entire life that I've talked to, that I've befriended. that would be like, you know what, dude, let me tell you something, bruh, <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to get it pregnant. She not, I don't want to go nowhere. I, I don't want her getting up and leaving. So you know what? I'm going to get her pregnant. And she can't leave me at all. Never heard it. Never heard a dude say that. In my entire life. Never heard him. So maybe, just maybe, it's time for you to reevaluate the dudes that you're hanging around. The dudes that you're coming in contact with. Maybe both of you are paranoid. You ever think about that? Maybe both of you have a problem with mistrust. Maybe that maybe maybe that's what it is. Top ways to know that you're just the placeholder guy in a relationship. The first one is she never introduces you as someone significant. She's always only going to introduce you as just a friend. The next one is she's never going to be flexible with making any plans or having a relationship with you because she's simply using you to fill space when no one else is there. She's basically filling the void of loneliness using you. The third one is she never actually wants to get to know you. Her conversations are very superficial. The next one should be super obvious, but if she ignores you or the communication is very inconsistent, I can tell you as a woman wholeheartedly, we do not ignore people that we actually want relationships with. So if she's inconsistent, 
you're the placeholder guy that she's gonna hit up when she wants to benefit from you or wants to go on a date or doesn't wanna feel lonely. Like she likes you enough to hang out with you, but doesn't like you enough to be committed to you. The next one is, is anytime you talk about anything serious or wanting to be in a relationship with her, she's gonna gaslight you and tell you that she's not looking for anything serious, even though she talks about all these other guys with you and wanting to be in a relationship. So she actually confuses the hell of you and just enough to where you stick around and continue to be the placeholder because she'll say stuff like maybe one day it'll work out with you and I but right now I'm just doing my thing or I'm finding my peace and lastly the most obvious one is that she only hangs out with you when she knows she can benefit from you whether it's a date night coffee a dinner date where essentially you're paying for something or she benefits from you okay bye here are six things every man needs from his woman I said his woman I've done some research. This list is in no particular order. Let's get into it, family. Number one, needs to feel gratitude and appreciation. Number two, loyalty. Number three, intimacy, copulation, love making. I think y'all get the picture. Number four, understanding. Number five, support. And number six, respect. No doubt there are things that men think that you'll never do or that you'll always let them get away with off of the strength of just how much you love them. But there's also this secret other thing where they think there's things that you'll never do because you're afraid that he might you. It's not like an active thought or desire. It's just more like the math maths when it comes to the male privilege that clicked for me for the first time like a few years ago while I was like at a bar and I was talking to this guy and he was like inviting me to this place and I jokingly was like I could be anybody like I could rob you and he said do you want to like he can invite as many women as he wants to his place because in his head if it's an issue he can just it's fine no big deal I think a lot of men exist within that privilege and they also exist within the privilege that they just think a woman just would never even if she could she would never and so I personally like to make it clear that I could I could I would I told my mom that once and she was like, you threaten men. And I was like, no, but like, I mean, I, I don't have like the strongest track record of mental stability. It's pretty easy for me to point out the obvious that like, you think I'll me, but I wouldn't do. Don't treat me like I'm a dumb bitch and then fall asleep next to me. <laughs> That's wild. wild. I, mean, I just like to just sow a little, the seeds of doubt. I'm just saying more. I just think more women should just sow seeds of doubt whenever they can. Gently. I also think that you just place yourself in danger. Men are hardwired to defend themselves, pretty much. They are, you know, they're protecting and providing and they, you just activated the protection part of a man. There was another lady and I agreed with what she was saying. She was walking down the street and a man just walked up to her. She had a fanny pack on and she had some pepper spray and a man just walked up to her and he said, um, do you think that could really stop me if I actually wanted to do something to you? That's out of nowhere. And she was like, that's kind of weird for you to say that. That's really very alarming for you to say that. And I agreed. I was like, yeah, man, because why would you, why would you say that? Like, <laughs> That woman don't know you, bro. Stop being weird. That's, uh, don't do that. But then you can get it on the internet and then say, do you know what I could do to you? in front of a man now you put a man in the mode of yeah maybe but do you know what i could do to you you know we can up the ante if you need to if you want to we we can go there i didn't plan on going here but it's me over anybody else what were you thinking and you could tell or you should be able to tell that you're off your rocker because your mom said what are you doing you do that to men oh well i and you went on trying to say oh man i was stupid now instead of saying that was dumb of me you went on well i'm not the most stable and you know if i get it it's probably a little satire in there trying to make light of the situation that you're going through some things and for that i hope that you get that taken care of but to be on here trying to make that into whatever it is. And more importantly, women in the comments jumping on the, the bandwagon talking about, oh yeah, man, these men don't understand what I got up my sleeve. And then wondering why you'd be attracting negative, weird, crazy men. Some of these women are slow, dude. 